Okay, welcome uh, back to side two of the meditation tape. And I was just rambling on here about a phrase that Billy uses, which is, if time is one, all is one. And here he's talking about being able to seize the moment, to view life at exactly what's going on right now. Uh, not be dwelling on the past or thinking about the future when you're you know, supposed to be paying attention to what's happening at the moment. Because the point he's making here is he wants you to learn uh, when you are out in life to be able to pause just for a moment. Once you've learned to actually keenly observe things and see things for what they are, amazing what happens. Uh, and then if you can learn to pause just at the point when you're getting to react to something, well, a very amazing thing happens. When you can pause just for a flash second and kick into gear your abilities of clean observation to see things really the way that they are, a lot of amazing things happen. When you do that, you seem to grasp everything all at once. So through pure observation, we're going to learn to pause precisely at the moment, which allows us to grasp everything and see it clearly and detain the, 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 the observation just for an instant when the spirit itself is still kind of plastic and molding and not committed to a fixed idea. Because we're getting ready. Like I say, the spirit is open for business all the time. It's listening to all of your thoughts. So if we begin to pause and so forth, and while we're actually observing something and see it clearly, then we have a chance to see things the way they really are. This slows down the pure observation, of course, but it gives you time to form the active behavior that the spirit is going to develop based on your new observations, your new knowledge. You can prevent hastiness of word and deed through the moment of pause. How many times have you done something a little too quickly and you had to repeat yourself real fast because uh, you just suddenly, just as you said it, you knew it was wrong, so you say it again? I find myself when I'm speaking sometimes, I get going real fast and I'm thinking about two or three minutes ahead of where I'm going and I'm forming visions and ideas of what I want to talk about. And a couple of times I've just forgotten what I was saying at the moment. I get so caught up with what I'm going to talk about next, I just get totally lost. Well, or if you have a case where you've been to a party or for if you drink or whatever and you've had occasion where you've said things you didn't really mean and you woke up in the morning finding it necessary to call a friend and apologize or explain yourself or something. Well, drinking for one thing isn't good for you at all, but if you were to say things that you didn't mean even without the alcohol, a moment of pause could have prevented that. In a business meeting or working with, uh, you know, in your day-to-day -day environment, if we learn to pause and just for a second clearly observe what's going on, to seize that moment, freeze it in time just for a part second, and draw upon our spiritual self, draw upon the ability of our spirit to feed us wisdom, you can do that. And that's what meditation is going to help you do. You're going to learn where all the parts of yourself are how to actually identify and feel and use your spiritual self. And it's really quite simple. Within a day or so, you'll be doing things and you'll be telling your friends all about it and uh, you know, you'll be surprised how strong you actually really are. Okay. Once you've done that though, once you slow down and pause and so forth, this causes the spirit to become a little more flexible and approachable because you've got a little time here, you've got a part second. This causes it to grow in strength and awareness. It's got more time to observe. It's got more time to actually give you a feeling of wisdom that you can actually use to observe with, causing undesired and unwise reactions to become less of a habit. Okay? It gets easier all the time. You now have time to properly make a decision. Your decision will not be based on any preconceived religious or belief structure overtones. It will no longer be based on what someone else said or what you thought about something. It's no longer based on any kind of belief structure or concept or idea, whatever. But it's, it's entirely then, your observation is entirely based upon a true observation of that object, be it a person, an idea, a thought, or whatever it is. And then your spirit begins to grow because it's truthful. It's, you're feeding your spirit wisdom. It knows when you've observed something correctly. Because don't take your, uh, sub, uh, your subconscious and your, your spiritual subconscious for granted. It's awfully intelligent. In most cases, it's smarter than you are, which is kind of a strange thing because your material mind is so busy being intelligent 
being cool and doing what it thinks is right, it most of the time does not see things as clearly or have a clear enough understanding, as clear of an understanding of the world as your spiritual subconscious, which is a collection of all of your wisdom from previous lives, all that information's in there. It sees things clearly. It's not illogical like the material mind is. So that's what I mean by your spiritual self is generally more intelligent than your material self. You know when you do something and you get a little hunch, a feeling that you should do something? That's the beginning of your spiritual subconscious feeding you information. And for those of you who are used to paying attention to hunches, the little voice that perks up just at that flash second when an idea pops into your head, for those of you who have learned to entertain that and allow that hunch to rush in for a second, uh, you, you have found out, like I have and many others have, that that most all the time is the correct thing to do. That that's great advice coming from yourself. It's not coming from any outside source. There's no mystical revelation going on here. That's just your spiritual self trying to get through your hard head. It's trying to get through all of your material self and give you some advice. Now let it come in. Your new powers of pure observation, then see matters of the future approach. Let them slip into the present and without holding on to them. Let them slip right into the past. The point is, don't spend any time dwelling on the past. Don't sit around saying, you know, wasting your time and energy worrying about what happened. You know, oh, gee, I didn't do this right, or I'm worried about that. It's a total waste of time. Get back to the philosophy that if time is one, all is one. Learn to live in the moment, observing the exact moment. If you concentrate on the past and your worries, then that's who you're going to be, and that's how you're going to react to things. If you concentrate on the present, on the exact present, then you always know that you're creating a new future. You can create new thoughts. You are not hampered by old worries and fears and ideas and so forth. You can then plan for the future using the continuous evolution of the spirit. You'll also find out something else which is amazing. How many of you really understand how much of the future your subconscious knows about? If you allow your spiritual subconscious to come forward, you actually uh, tell it to do that. Tell it to come forward and let you know about what it's planning for your future. Your conscious mind then can get in connection to your subconscious. Introduce the two of them. Hello, conscious, this is my subconscious. Get together here and talk things over. You'll be amazed to find out that your material self spends a lot of time in the past dwelling over your problems, fears, and worries, while your spiritual subconscious is very busy in there mapping out the next few days. It's planning out a future. And your conscious mind and most people have no idea what's going on in there. Okay, so learn to be in the present. There's great freedom in there. And learn to through your meditative exercises, which we're going to talk about, get into using your spiritual self and looking into that future. Now, this is one of the problems with religion. Um, religion doesn't want you so much to think about the present, but they continually are telling people all the time to go do whatever you want to do, and it's God's will, and everything is, just, um, everything is based upon the afterlife. But don't worry about this life. Everything is going to be in the kingdom of heaven later on. They don't want you taking responsibility for your own life. They don't want you using your spirit. They don't want you to discover how powerful an individual you can be once you are using your own spirit and are connected to creation yourself. Okay? Daydreams are an interesting thing. Uh, when it comes to meditation, they're a real obstacle. They get in the way because they affect concentration. Because daydreams are, you know, we manufacture those out of all of our little daily problems and material things. They're a lot of fun and they're useful in some areas, but if you find yourself daydreaming when you begin to meditate, dash it out. Stop them and get yourself concentrated.